Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my guests, I just want to give a shout out to my sponsors at Blue Chew. If you need a little help in the bedroom, try Blue Chew for free for the first month. Just pay $5 in shipping. Make sure you use code Holly at bluechew.com. All right. So today my guests are college sweethearts who took their love for swinging and sex and turned it into a career. You may recognize her as GameStop Girl or them as the couple who went viral for having sex while hiking. Welcome husband and wife duo Haley Rose and Max Phils. Hi. Hi, Holly. We're so Hi, excited guys. to be here. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thanks Thank for having you. Us. <laughs> and also, a little nod to Max because it's his birthday today. Thanks, Holly. Yay. Yeah, it's my birthday. Happy birthday, baby. Woo. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way to spend it. Am I allowed to ask how old you are? Yeah, sure. Ooh. I'm 27. Believe it or not, oh God. baby. Oh, okay, yeah. so, so you can still be like a stepson for a while. Oh, all I the think time. So. A little bit all longer. Time. More <laughs> days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got a few. I think I got a few years on me. Like, I just shave. I like, you know, I know yeah. how to shave. Yeah. You just got to shave, like, stay out of the sun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just a big keep one. those puppy dog eyes. <laughs> and, um, I mean, you know, just depends on how you look because porn is never about reality and you know, because that in between the stepson and the stepfather age where you're just like oh. a good looking guy. Exactly. Yeah. What are you going to do there's, with yourself? There's, there's no market for it. Also no. for women, there's no market for like no. 25 That's or 35. That's true. Yeah. Once you're 30, it's like MILF scene, MILF scene. Yeah, and I'm like, I know. <laughs> or, or earlier, I shot a girl who was 25 in a MILF scene, but she wow. looked older because she had like yeah. really big lip injections. Oh, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so like the, the company was like, ah, she could be a MILF. And I was like, okay. <laughs> People call me MILF sometimes just because I have big boobs, but I'm like, I I also yeah. have baby face, you have so such I'm like a baby face. I don't know. I guess I'm a baby milf. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that actually. It's kind of like a cute name. <laughs> that would be a like cute a little name. shirt if you just yeah. show like baby milf on it. That's so cute. That's on. Yeah, it's kind of cute. cute. Like milf in training. Do you have any plans tonight for your birthday? Or is this the highlight? Literally coming on this podcast. <laughs> this is the highlight of your day. Honestly, this is uh, really cool. Um, I really like your podcast, and it feels really good to be able to like you know, get your attention and like be able to come on. We do have a dinner planned tonight with a bunch of our friends, oh, like nice. a mix of industry friends and like friends from our like personal lives. Mm -hmm. So it's, I'm really excited actually. Yeah. How do you find that those people mix like your industry friends and like your personal life friends? Is there ever like a weirdness there? No. Honestly, no. I think, you know, we, we surround ourselves with people that we really like and mm -hmm. that we, um, identify with so i feel like all of our friends are they're open-minded yeah they're open-minded and yeah. they're able to like walk that line between like normal and like porn mm -hmm. you know we're not so brain rot so <laughs> i think like yeah our friends get along really well we've honestly. told all our friends what we do like yeah. from the when we first started it and all of them were cool about it and so i think like if we had friends that weren't cool about it, they probably wouldn't really right. be as close to us anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, too, you know, despite what some people think, uh, porn stars are generally not like sexual deviant monsters, and yeah, they can no, they true. can hang out in public and they can have conversations <laughs> about things besides sex. So um, there's some that I cannot take in public. Oh, for sure, there are some. <laughs> some of, of course, there are. Like Johnny Love and fucking Nick Strokes, I cannot take them anywhere in public without embarrassing ourselves. <laughs> Okay, but, so give us give us story because I don't really know these guys. Okay, so Johnny Love, uh, he's from Miami. He's also like step bro type. Step yeah. bro. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then Nick Strokes is also like a step bro type. For example, Nick and I, we always just get he like talks very loud. So we're on flights yeah. oftentimes together, going to like you know Phoenix or Vegas together. Sometimes he's just very loud and talks. <laughs> Very candidly, I guess, mm. is the only way to put it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he has a level of confidence that I just, like, dream about achieving. Mm. I feel like he speaks yeah. as if there's no one around him, and I'm like... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely, like, a time and a place sometimes. Sometimes I have to remind myself <laughs> that maybe I shouldn't talk about, like, erections in a, you know, certain environments uh -huh. or, like, too loudly where other people... 
can hear. Oh, it's, it's so funny. You know, it's but it's so normal to us, right? <laughs> yeah. It it's just, like weird to edit yourself because you're like, this is a conversation that I literally like. And it's not, it's like, you know, do you guys have that problem when you have like the plumber come over or something and you realize that there's just porn everywhere? Oh, yes. Mm. yes. And you don't, All but the you don't time. see it, right? Like you don't <laughs> yeah, see it's like, like the naked magazines or the dildos because mm-hmm. it's just like uh-huh. I'm just a part of your day to day. Yes. And then like someone comes <laughs> in and then they're like, and then you're like, Whoa. well, actually, we moved recently. So we have had a lot of people at my house like dropping off furniture and like fixing the Wi Fi and everything. And I had my Expos Awards and like some DVDs that we left out. And um, one, the guy who came over for the Wi Fi, he was like, can I like, ask you guys like are you in the adult industry and I was like oh like yeah and I was yeah, like how did he know and then I was like oh I have a giant like x trophy right yeah in uh-huh. the like entryway so I was like oh yeah you're on the cover of like this browser's, browser's DVD, DVD. Like, in our <laughs> <Yeah. room. laughs> just like on the coffee table like just porn and yeah. yeah so I'm always blind to it like I feel like when I entered the industry I went through a phase of like adjusting to that being everywhere all the time. And now I'm just so used to that that I forget that that's not like other people don't we're, see we're that. We're really proud of it also. Like we mm-hmm. really like we have a few different, you know, expos like magazines that we're in and like different like covers of DVDs that we're on. And we like we're proud of it. So we like have it like prominently displayed in our living room. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, I get that. Yeah. I get that. So um let's talk about uh, you know, how you guys got into the industry. So before you guys even got into porn, Mm -hmm. you were dating. So this was something that you guys did together, right? So maybe tell me how you guys first met. Um, Well, we both went to the same college up in Northern California called University of California, Santa Cruz. And- um, Oh, I applied there. Oh yeah, yeah, Yeah. go banana slugs. And um, (laughs) so I think we, I, he noticed me a couple of times like on our bus that we had that looped around campus. And I- we like matched on Tinder. This was like, mm-hmm. this was also during the pandemic. And so I remember ma- matching with him on Tinder and telling my roommate, I was like, I really want to go meet this guy. And she's like, are you really going to break quarantine just to like meet this she dude? Was so mad. <laughs> this was like right before the like vaccines were even available. So mm-hmm. this was super early on. Yeah. Um, But my fraternity, I lived in a, fr- in a frat house at the time and we had like, special access to the vaccines early because we were like working on campus we were like a lot of us were teachers um Weren't or you like working the, the testing center on yeah campus? a couple of us were working at the testing center so we just got yeah. vaccinated like immediately at that it point it still took like a year for vaccines to be like to come around right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it wasn't that long ago but i've really like, no. forgotten what it was like dude it was crazy yeah. back in the day but yeah we were we had access to it super early so we were like fuck it let's just do it and we can just like try to have a normal life again <laughs> and yeah because of that she had no excuse to not meet me right <laughs> i mean it was still like <laughs> just because you're vaccinated doesn't mean that yeah. quarantine doesn't matter but uh but yeah i i was like whatever i'm gonna like see this guy we went on a date and then we were pretty inseparable after so that So what first was your date. date like if it was still, like, COVID and, like, did you go? Okay. Like, yeah, where'd you go? That's right? a really good question. restaurants were closed. <laughs> yeah, everything was closed. Um, but um, I'm sorry. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, our first date, we actually went hiking. Okay. Because our campus is in, like, a beautiful redwood forest. Okay. And so that makes sense. we had trails everywhere. Yeah. And so we are like, let's just go on a little hike, like, take a walk. And, um... We ended up like just <laughs> we. That was also the first time we had sex. And actually, on the no. The, oh. Well, hold on. Um, yeah, back up. The first time, our first date ever. We before we ever like started dating or anything. We were talking on Tinder, and we were like, "Yeah, like I, I just want to have like I want to I want to fuck on the first date. Like I don't want to date anyone that wants to like date for a while and then maybe have sex. Like it was really important to both of us that we were gonna have sex." The first time we met. Can I ask yeah. who brought that up first? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Was well. it me? Well, Might have been I, me. Because we had both recently gotten out of long-term relationships, and we made it clear that neither of us were looking for anything more than okay. sex. Yeah. Okay, We gotcha. made it very clear from the beginning. Okay. We were like, I'm just trying to fuck. I do, do not want a girlfriend right now. Yeah. Um, And our first day, we ended up not having sex. After all that, after like, yeah, like I only want to date someone that wants to have sex with me, blah, blah, blah. Why didn't you? We just had a really nice time, like, hanging out on the beach. That was when we, like, went to the beach and just hung out. Because, like, the boardwalk was closed, and we just, like, just walked through the closed boardwalk. 
like all the rides were closed oh, and we just like hung out. Now. Yeah. We like crossed a bridge and stuff. We like oh. walked around. We just like hung out and smoked some weed. That's sweet that you because I feel like I honestly I was don't like, even wow, he remembers your first date and you don't. <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm. well, that, because that our was second, our second date. Our when second we date was so memorable. Okay. That it's just like well, yeah, so that was our first date. We didn't end up fucking, which is crazy because mm-hmm. I I don't think – I think that was my first time ever happening to me. Yeah. Where the, I didn't The first time you went on a date. date. Really? And didn't yeah. fuck, yeah. I remember like, you telling me that too. Yeah. Wow. I, I mean, I was always like sexual as a person yeah. and I was like, if I'm interested in you, like I want – I want the full experience. So you don't subscribe (laughs) to the whole idea that like women should withhold sex in order to like keep the guy. And if you give it away immediately, then they won't want to date you because they'll think you're a whore. Like, you don't. I think that's a bit old fashioned. Yeah. And I think it really just depends what you're looking for. Like I wasn't trying to do anything serious. So Mm -hmm. I was cool with just getting right to the point. But I think it. For some people, it is good, like, if you want to get to know someone before you commit to that level of a relationship. But I also think that um, – I think people maybe should be having sex, like, <laughs> early in the relationship yeah. so that you know if you're sexually compatible since yeah. that's, mm-hmm. like, a big deal. Uh-huh. But anyway, let's getting back to the second date because this was, like – yeah, so this is our second time going out together. We went on a hike and um, we, like – just took like a little bit of a step off the trail and we were fucking and um it was actually like (laughs) when max like put it inside me the first time i like immediately and like i couldn't control myself i said i love you the first time he put his dick inside me it's Damn, just like some magic dick <laughs> yeah thank you it was, it was a very magic thank dick you. it just slipped out of me on I, like, your second date on the second on date. your second date the first like, time he sticks his dick you're just like i was like oh i love uh-huh. you and i was like fuck i was like what did i just say and i think you just pretended like i you just didn't hear i it. just politely ignored her <laughs> you just politely ignored her yeah and just, like rammed her really hard you're yeah like, well, yeah <laughs> I was like, okay, you know, I get it. So hold on, did you mean it, or was it just like a weird thing that just fell out of That's your a mouth? Good question. I think I was just like so into the moment, okay, and it was just like an unfiltered, just like reaction okay. that I had in the moment. <laughs> I mean, now it, it would have been like, I mean, I do love you, so it oh. was like true. But I was definitely like the. I guess I was already starting to fall in love with you if I was oh. saying that. Yeah. But Kitty. But yeah, I don't even know what came over me that just like slipped out. And then like five minutes later, um, we got we got caught actually having sex. So this is our first time having sex. I've already said I love you. Next thing you know, we we get caught. Like someone's walking down yeah. the trail. There's like a silver fox like couple behind us. Yeah. They're like gray hair, you know, maybe like fifties or sixties year old couple. We was just like, oh my god, excuse me, like I'm so sorry. And we were like, oh my fuck, like I'm trying to put my dick away, like really scared and terrified. Um, and they're like, no, 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 don't worry, guys. We're just trying to like, can we just like get past you guys? You can. Keep- <laughs> yeah, they're like, you can keep going. Like, yeah. we're just trying to. So get past. awkward. I just like, like, just, uh-huh. like scooting over. We're just like, like, literally. And they're like, sorry. <laughs> literally. I kind of just like put my dick away and they were like, and I was like, yeah, you can. They're like, yeah, cool. We're cool. And they just like wanted to keep going down the trail. <laughs> and then they left and we kept fucking. Yeah, we just, yeah, because yeah. I needed to come. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that was like a little like foreshadowing of our mm-hmm. future because oh, later on we yeah, went true. viral for a hiking video we did and so i don't know that was the start of all of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's wild so okay so you guys start dating um and but like neither of you wanted anything serious yeah when did you realize that this was like more than what you bargained for we were dating like our last year of college and then we were mm-hmm. both graduating and moving home um we were both from Southern California, like LA area. So we were both moving back down here. And I think spending that little bit of time apart where we weren't like seeing each other all the time, I was Mm -hmm. like, oh my God, like I really miss you. Mm -hmm. And there was actually one point, sorry, babe, but there was one point where Max tried to ghost me. (laughs) He, cause he was catching feelings. Yeah. And And I was trying to fuck other girls and I was like, I was, so I was ignoring you for a while. And then I just sent him titty pictures every day until he replied to me. (laughs) I was like, you are not ghosting these boobs. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Um, That's true. I was fucking other girls, but none of them had boobs like you. So thank you. I mean, (laughs) um, and so we started like, 
spending more time together and we kind of had the idea that we're going to be together but we're still gonna fuck other people Mm -hmm. so you guys decided okay like we want to be together but like we want to keep it open yeah okay yeah and um it was always more of like because we were both very emotionally involved with each other right so it was always more of just like a sexual thing rather than an emotional openness to the relationship yeah um because i do get that question a lot like Mm -hmm. if because we're not polyamorous that's mm-hmm. like a different thing. Yeah, okay. Like we don't fall in love or like date other people. You don't have like other multiple boyfriends or girlfriends. You no. just like have sex with other people. Yes. Yeah, but there's no like emotional mm-hmm. attachment. There. No, yeah. 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 I mean, I kind of sometimes I like to joke around that I have other girlfriends, yeah. but <laughs> I don't. It's just fun when love we have them. like threesomes and we're like, oh, you have another girlfriend for yeah, the day. Yeah, here's my other girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that. I get it. So my parents were swingers, so like I totally that's cool. Understand yeah. where you guys that. are coming from, and they were very much like emotionally. They were very connected, and they were very much like, and yeah, they also like sweet. fell in love at first sight. It was like, so a very sweet thing. Cute. Um, but yeah, they were they were swingers, and they would go to like orgies and have like threesomes, and, yeah, and all this kind of stuff. But that's it was cool. always like them together, and then you know they were able to like raise a family and mm-hmm. you know yeah, like, have a beautiful. normal normal life. So. So I, you know, it's definitely something that I don't find it is weird at right. all. Right. You know? Yeah. So when did you guys decide to get married? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to talk. You um, can talk, talk about it. Well, because we had both graduated and um, we had been together for what, like a year at that point? Mm-hmm. And um, it just felt, it felt natural. <laughs> I don't know. You're what funny. To say about it. <laughs> You're funny. We're actually not. Um, married yet um, legally, mm. uh, but for all intents and purposes, we are married. Like we're, all, I'm, I'm from Colombia. I'm wearing a Colombian national T-shirt. In South America, you're kind of considered married. We call them maridos mm-hmm. when you're like live together. So mm-hmm. when you move in with a girl, you're already considered married. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just not a legal procedure mm-hmm. where sure. I'm from. Mm-hmm. So. Other than us, like, signing the actual paperwork, s- declaring to the government that we're married, mm-hmm. we're pretty much married. We like, did, yeah, we did move in together yeah. maybe, like, three months after we uh-huh. graduated college. Our families, so. my grandmother already cried and said, I love you oh, to her. Yeah. Your family, you know, they love me. Yeah. They, like, adopted me in so quickly. It was so sweet. It was really, yeah. They've never done that with any of my other girlfriends before. So, like, as far as anything's concerned like we're already a family so Mm -hmm. i think we're already married we just haven't done the paperwork yet and we're waiting to do that until we can financially afford a wedding of our dreams of our dreams (laughs) and like one that we could have like in front of our family because a lot of my family lives in colombia so yeah we need to be able to do that yeah it's gonna be an international affair yeah exactly yeah how long you guys been together three years okay do you think that you guys will like once you get married do you think you'll continue to remain like open yeah you i don't, don't see that changing yeah no um i mean here's the thing we don't really have sex off camera with other people anymore mm-hmm. we used to but it just doesn't but once it became a job yeah once it became yeah. a they job they would say like don't take what you love and make it a job because then it yep. just becomes a job <laughs> it's so true and now like I most s- of our time and energy is spent yeah. on sex for work yeah so there's just less opportunities in our personal life yeah. not that it doesn't happen it's just i still love it like i still yeah. we still love having sex with other people and it's yeah. like a lot of fun um but it is work and when we're not working i prefer to spend that time with you you mm-hmm. know so yeah. do you ever have like a threesome off camera and now that you're in like content production you think in your head like oh man if we filmed this like we you know what I mean like we could be we, making money yeah. off of this like yeah, it's hard yeah, to get yeah. out of that mindset it Sometimes. is hard um, it's like it's all, especially when your phone is right there I'm like I could literally just pick up the phone yeah and this would be I like did that. the one time we had a th- we had a threesome uh before we became like popular online uh-huh. um and it was like with a civilian girl that I knew yeah she was and, awesome yeah she was cool and I still picked up the phone and like recorded it a little bit. Yeah. Like so. I mean, it's nice to have a little like little clips just for the memories and mm-hmm. personal enjoyment. Because I mean, that's how it, this whole thing started. Like when we were swinging, we would take like pictures oh, and videos, and we had a small Discord group of other swingers where we would like share little our yeah. little sex clips and things like that. And so that's kind of where get like doing content started. Is we were like, oh, like let's record this to send to our swinger friends and like. 
like I used to send it to my friends too. I used to send yeah, my friends like well, pictures of your tits all the time. Like all, like we had a big like Dude, frat every, group chat. Everybody and, wants to be your friend, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We no. had uh, this one time I took her to the frat house and I was just like, hey guys, like check her out. She's super hot. And I like I was oh, like, babe, like, like take your pants your, off. Yeah. yeah. You're like, show them your butt tattoo. And I'll yeah. like, take my shorts off and like showing them my ass. Like <laughs> at the time she really liked like being shown off to like friends and stuff. So uh-huh. I was like, fuck yeah, I can do that. I'll I show mean, you off. There's definitely like a public like like maybe i don't know kink type thing between yeah. us like i like i like being observed you like being an exhibitionist <laughs> yeah, yeah there you go that's the word yeah 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 so how did this so then how did this specifically lead to porn yeah so we were doing this like sending clips and pictures just for fun and then we had both or like i had quit my job because i was just sick of my job and we needed an income and so max w- like at the time, we were also very active on Reddit. Yeah, and you posted a picture of my boobs that went did super well, like almost viral on the porn Reddit. And so I was like, maybe like we can like start an OnlyFans, and that would do well. So we kind of just like jumped right into that. Mm-hmm. Like maybe like a week after I quit my job, I made the account and just started taking pictures that same day. Mm-hmm. Started uploading stuff like whatever yeah. we had on our phones and yeah, ever since like, that day, we, we had money from like. We had some money like saved up after college, um, but we put all of our money into Bitcoin and we didn't want to take it out. Um, Mm -hmm. At the time, it was like $17,000. We didn't want to fucking take it out. So we were like, we need to figure out a way to make money quickly and to be able to like buy more Bitcoin. So I was like. (laughs) (laughs) So you got into porn so you could buy more Bitcoin. Literally, yeah. (laughs) Honestly, that's one of the big reasons. Because like I could, we we both went to college. I have two degrees. She has a biology degree. I was gonna like tr- you know go into finance and like work my way up to like a hundred and fifty thousand dollar a year job. Yeah, but that's gonna take like five six years. Yeah, I don't have five six years. I need Bitcoin yeah. now. So like, I was like, fuck it, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. So did you guys have a conversation about like what this would mean for your? Like your personal lives, if you got into porn, because you think about your family seeing it, your friends seeing it. Like, like what was that conversation? Or were you just like, fuck it? Like you were so used to being exhibitionist, sharing clips with your friends and stuff that not that much like thought went into it. I mean, I didn't really ever think I would get popular or like gain a following. Mm. So I thought it was going to be like a smaller thing than it is now. So I didn't really worry too much about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we've had conversations along the way, like as. We've grown and evolved in yeah. our careers. I, I did, we did sit down like at my first apart at my first apartment in LA with mm-hmm. my roommates. I, we kind of did sit down, and I was like, "Hey, babe, like, you know, this last post on Reddit went really well. Like, there's a really good chance that we're gonna get really popular. Like, is that okay? Like, are you okay with your friends? You know, maybe seeing <laughs> that you're a porn star now? Because mm-hmm. at the we also posted a video on Pornhub at the time." And it wasn't getting much traction, but I was like, listen, like, there's a chance that this might do well. Like, are you okay with what's going on? And she was like, yeah, like, I don't care. Like, whatever. (laughs) I mean, I never really expected anyone in my life to have a big issue with it. Like, Mm -hmm. my parents are very open-minded. And growing up, sex was like, they always talked about sex with me. They weren't weird about it. They're like, people have sex. Like, that's a normal part of life like very sexually open people. So I didn't think they would really have an issue with it. So I was like, fuck it. Like it's like a big part of my identity is being sexual. And it was like a cool idea to bring that into my like work life. And so how did they react when, when you did do that and get, were they as cool about it as you thought they would be or where was? Yeah, I think because for a while I was lying about my job and they, Mm. they knew I was lying, but they didn't want to like, poke too much Mm -hmm. so um my dad i think he was worried that i was like selling drugs or like yeah he was worried that i was selling drugs he thought we were doing Mm. something very illegal probably and so i think he was just relieved that i wasn't (laughs) like (laughs) i wasn't like a drug lord or something crazy wow i don't think i've ever heard anybody (laughs) say that their father was relieved when they found out i was doing porn as opposed to something else because most people think that like for a father to find that out it's like the worst thing that could possibly happen to them he was actually really relieved that we weren't doing anything illegal yeah because he knew that I had money. 
from something and he just didn't know what. You didn't just say it was Bitcoin? I told him it was Bitcoin. I told him it was GameStop. And I told him that I started a company, which is all true, but it just didn't make sense because he was smart. He was like, if you have all your money in Bitcoin, I know for a fact you're not going to sell it. To, yeah, you know, okay. to be able so to spend was, it right now. Yeah. So he was like, "Where are you getting all the spending money from?" Yeah. Um. Because because <laughs> I've had Kazumi on a couple of times, yeah. and her parents still don't know she does porn. Oh my god, which how? is like wild to me. Well, she says that they're older and they're not they're really not like yeah, connected, but she basically okay. tells them that like it's crypto, and they're just okay. like okay. But yeah. they're obviously like yeah. No, my, yeah, so. my dad was. Like a little more savvy. that, he was like, hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what do they really mean? Yeah, yeah. So he was excited that it wasn't illegal and that I was one of the guys, like, one of the main guys fucking you. Yeah. yeah because, like, he asked straight up. He was like, he like, he, he basically like, asked me, like, what do I do? And I was like, I'm the, one of the main performers with, with her. And he was yeah. really relieved about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I told them most of what we do <laughs> happens as a couple. And, mm -hmm. yeah, we do film, like, 90% of my OnlyFans is videos of us together. And mm -hmm. and I'm so grateful, too, that we get booked on the professional side together a lot. Mm -hmm. They actually cast us as step-siblings pretty often. <laughs> I was I just, mean, yeah. We, we have the look for it. <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> is that, like, ever a little bit creepy, or is it just kind of funny? On the red carpet at AVN, um, this photographer was like, oh, you brought your brother. And she and was, was really like, upset. I actually, that was, I thought that was a little bit rude comment to say, but. So like, we get it. At first, yeah. so like when we first shot Nubiles, they were like, are you okay with being step siblings? And at first I was like, no, cause that felt kind of weird to me. Yeah. Cause like, I'm, I don't like incest. I don't think it's hot. Yeah. Um, so I was just like, mm, but like, honestly, it just, the, our look is so good just for makes it sense. Yeah. that it's kind of a missed opportunity not to. <laughs> yeah, and so and and then like porn is so ridiculous. It is, you know and what I mean? It's like you can, yeah, and you can't once you can get past the fact that like most of the scenes that you're gonna do are like very silly. It's yeah. like it's, you know, you it's just, just like it it's seriously. just the role I'm playing today. Yeah, and, like, yeah, just literally. have fun with it. Yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent. Okay, guys, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, and then when we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit more. Um, apparently, there's a story I have to ask you about a cum hot dog. Oh yes, which I'm very excited to hear. So <laughs> stick around; we'll be right back. Hey there, guys. Are you ready to take your performance to the next level? Whether you're in the bedroom or the boardroom, confidence is key, and this is where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. That's right, no more awkward pharmacy visits or long waits, just a discreet online prescription process that ships directly to your door. With Blue Chew, you can be ready anytime, anywhere. It's easy, effective, and most importantly, convenient. Simply chew it and do it. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code HOLLY at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code HOLLY, to receive your first month for free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and more important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. All right, everybody, we are back. So tell me about your very first pro scene that you shot. It was uh, with Kieran for Brazzers, right? Yes, um, hmm. it was with Kieran Lee. We had recently done a content trade with him, and he was like, you guys are, like, kind of cool. Like, could I maybe have you on Brazzers sometime? I was like, oh, my God, yes. Mm -hmm. Like, that was, like, because we were, like, had the idea of crossing over into, like, mainstream professional yeah. stuff for a little bit, but... We were wait waiting for the right opportunity, yeah. and that was definitely it. Because, like, everyone wants to fuck you, and I, like, <laughs> we, we have already gotten a bunch of offers, like, oh, yeah, we'll shoot you, Haley. Like, I'll fucking do anything to fuck you, basically. Yeah. And I'll, we were like, no, fuck that. We're going to wait for a good opportunity. I was also— Basically, they were trying to recruit her, and they were like, and leave your boyfriend at home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which, like, we actually— um, Like, I get it. He was yeah. applying to a few different um, agencies, and they mm -hmm. did the same thing, where they, like, were like, oh— we like her, but like we don't need you. And I yeah. was like, I'm not gonna be part of a agency that thinks my boyfriend isn't like worth it. So yeah. I was like, no. It's hard for guys to break in, you yeah, know. And because the thing yeah, is, it's is. like so many guys apply to agencies, and you know, even if they're super hot and they have a big dick and a great body, like 
the performing is a whole other kettle of fish. Exactly. And so many guys I can't agree. do it. And yeah. they think they can. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they were swingers, because, you know, they've done orgies, like, and it's, then it's they get on the set same. Once you it's have a different story. A sweaty guy with a camera in your face. <laughs> yes. Like, and you're trying to like, uh-huh. and it's like, get hard. Okay, we're doing pictures. We're doing this. Oh, you're like, take a break. Get hard again. Take a break. Like, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's it's tough. It's tough for guys. It's yeah. tough. I fucking yeah. love it though. It's, I knew I would be good. And I was like, <laughs> come on guys, give me a fucking chance. Like, yeah. So we well, got. And you also need to have that confidence in order yeah. to be able to do it. But then it has to be proved. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like a mental game. Yeah, yeah. like that yeah. Kieran, we should back up a little bit. That Kieran yeah. scene, first it was going to be a boy-girl with just Haley and him, and I was like, all right, this, you know, we don't really, I, she doesn't really do many boy-girls with other guys unless it's like, you know, brand building. Um, so I was like, yeah, fuck it, like, I'll go, I'll film it, like, this is a great opportunity for you, let's get in front of someone that works at Browsers. And yeah, when we it. got there, he was like, oh, hey, Max, like, you're a performer too, like, this girl from England is staying at my house, do you want to make this like a foursome? And like, he, he was like, can you perform in like 20 minutes? Like after I set up these lights and I was like, yeah, sure. Fuck it. Like whatever. Yeah. So we shot that content with him first mm-hmm. and that did well, I assume. It did super it well. Did great. Yeah. That video is still, I see people actually steal it from me and post it all over the internet. And I'm like, well, it must've been a good video. If yeah. They keep pirating that yeah, one. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> and, and like, I, pref- like I kept up with Karen Lee, like the first time he ever met me. He's put me through a few different tests and one of them was like that for sure. Yeah, and during that scene he was like, Oh, let's let's double penetrate. We did like Yeah, we did a DVP and everything. Like just on the fly. Wow. Yeah. Were you prepared for that? Um, I mean Had you done that before? Wasn't that with the other girl that was in the foursome with us? Or was that me? You did it first and then you did it first. (laughs) And then Marina Maya was like, uh like, Um, fuck it, I'll try it too. Yeah. Huh. But there was such good energy that day. I was just like so in the scene. I was like yeah. ready. I was down. It was hot. It was awesome. And so, so yeah, that went really well. And then we did. Um, he invited us for to do the professional scene, which was, um, yeah, I was pretty nervous doing my first ever professional scene mm-hmm. for Brazzers. Like, but luckily it was it was a boy girl with me. Like he, uh, Karen didn't. Like, I was worried that Karen was just gonna be like, oh yeah, let's do a, a Brazzers scene, like where I just like fuck you, mm-hmm. like somewhere for like an hour or whatever. And which is great. Like, that's an awesome opportunity. But you could do that whenever you want. We wanted a scene together. And that's mm-hmm. what he offered. So he yeah. gave us our first professional mainstream scene, four browsers, boy, girl, just us together. It was awesome. It felt like a little bit of a test because we did have, like, a difficult scene to shoot that day. It was an ad scene. So it was going to be a long day. We had a lot of pickup shots to get. Can you uh, explain to those who may not know yeah. what an ad scene is? So, you know, when you go on, like, Pornhub... And there's those little banners where it's like a scene playing at like two times the speed, mm-hmm. the little loop. That's like what we were creating. It's like that someone day, stuck basically. in a laundry or something. So yeah, it's like a it's like a sequence of funny coincidences that happens, and they make it into a little ad clip, like a thirty second clip. Um, so that's when the browser chase comes from the oh yeah. So um, so we had to do that, um, and we also had like the first half of the sex was in a shower, and I was like, okay, like. Like, water is anti-lube, but, you know, we'll make it work. But we get in there, and the camera guy tells me, he's like, you can't run the water hot because it'll fog up the camera lens. So we're in there in, like, a cold shower. Like, you kept your boner so hard, which was crazy with it being that cold. It was November, too. It was a pretty chilly day. It was so fucking cold. Yeah. <laughs> um, And, like... You know, they were like, okay, you guys need to fucking there for like 15, 20 minutes. I'm like, what the hell positions are we going to do for 15 points? But we figured it out. We like, we're creative. How did you keep it up during that? Like, I mean, you always I'm really a good performer. Play. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> like, I, I really do enjoy performing for people, whether it be live or just for a camera guy. I, it's fun. Yeah. You were just I mean, destined. I you get off to the whole situation a little bit. Like, you've always wanted to do porn. Yeah, I've always wanted to do porn. I enjoy people, I enjoy fucking people's wives in front of them <laughs> and stuff like that. So, like, <laughs> you know. So, so, okay. So, has that happened? Yeah, actually. I, mm-hmm. So, I didn't lose my virginity to a married woman, but pretty much the second girl I ever had sex with was a married woman in her, like, early 40s while her husband watched. And uh, that came about <laughs> through... Craigslist. Um, at the nice. time, this was back in like 2000, 
Wow. 16 or something. Did they post a thing like looking for a young stud to fuck my wife? Yeah, exactly. And I I, think, apl- I applied immediately. Yeah, before they got rid of the personal section. On whatever. Craigslist, yeah. yeah. This was back in like 2016 what? and I just like applied. Okay, so. Barely 18. Tell too. me about that. Like you show up like. Okay, so first um, they were like, yeah, like send me some pictures, like blah, blah, blah. Tell me about yourself. Did you get to see pictures of them? Yeah, she posted okay. pictures on the fucking ad. And I was oh, okay, okay. She's hot. Okay. Like, hot, you know, fit blonde 40 year old male and I was like mm-hmm. fuck yeah let's do this she was interested in me and I needed to get to her house in Santa Clarita mm-hmm. at, and I was like still in high school I didn't have a car so I stole my dad's car <laughs> like snuck out of the window stole my dad's car drove Anything up to Santa Clarita and like the middle of the night and she was like like, like she was like quiet like my kids are upstairs sleeping and I was like <gasps> Oh, that shit turns me off. Oh. Crazy. I can't. Oh my God. And then I, yeah, I fucked her in her living room while her husband watched. Oh, Did my they like God. record it or anything? Did they, they didn't record it. Oh, actually, I think he might have, but I never got it. That's but crazy. she made her husband like, so I was fucking her like doggy, right? You know, on my knees. And she made her husband get underneath our legs, like looking up at the action. And you so didn't like, lose it, like, while this man's face was underneath you? No, I came immediately. Like, <laughs> I came immediately. It was the so opposite. much fun. He loved it. It was so much fun. Did, was he, like, a cuck or he just, oh, like... Oh, hell to, yeah. Oh, okay. Super cuck to the core. Okay. Loved being humiliated, like... Oh, so did you play bitch, that You're a bitch, I'm better thing. than you. Yep, the oh, whole wow. thing. Oh, wow. That's cool. Wow. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, um, <laughs> am I right that you, like... Had sex with some of your mom's friends? Yes. Um, <laughs> so my um, my real mom was gone, has been gone out of my life for a, a really long time now. But my stepmother, she is a fit, I don't know, maybe she's like mid-40s now. Um, fit like Colombian woman. Um, and she has like a lot of like fit, hot Colombian friends that are like her age. Like at the time they were like mid-30s. And... Um, I would just like hit on her friends at like different family functions. And um, I started fucking one of her friends who was married to another one of her family friends. And like, dude, it was like a whole thing, actually. Like he didn't find out for a while. And oh God, it was, it was crazy. Sounds messy. Yeah, it was really messy, but (laughs) it was really fun. She was really hot. That was an inkling to your future. Yeah. You knew that you were maybe destined (laughs) to have sex Especially for older for women. The MILFs, yeah. yeah. I always love MILFs. I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, there's something very special about us. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> great, So, Haley, were you very sexual growing up? Yeah, I feel like I maybe didn't have as many crazy opportunities to express myself <laughs> like that. Um, at yeah. least not until I went to college. Right. But I was always, I always knew I was a sexual person. I was always like, Instead of paying attention to lecture, I'd just be like thinking about daydreaming about sex all day in like high school. Um, <laughs> so once I got to college, though, I started exploring that a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. What is the story about a cum hot dog? Yeah. So <laughs> um, I did a scene for Reality Kings okay. maybe about a year ago now. Um, and this was also one of those ad scenes. Cause so part of what they were trying to do was make something very ridiculous and like eye catching to go on this ad scene. Mm-hmm. Um, and Sounds about right. Yeah. So the scene was about me being at a barbecue and I like fucked my friend's dad at the barbecue. There's a scene where he comes in my mouth. That's the cum shot. And then they wanted me to spit the cum like onto the hot dog as if I'm like dressing it with like mustard. mustard. <laughs> it's like a line of like cum down it. And I'll, they like showed me the funniest thing too is that they've, they've done this before because they showed me a video and they're like, this is what we're recreating. And I'm like, why do you need to, like multiple videos of girls spitting cum on the hot dog? I but, mean, because apparently the, fr- the first cum hot dog went so well. Yeah, it wasn't enough. You need another one. <laughs> so they had me spit it onto there. And then like they're filming it and like, they kind of like they don't call cut right away. So yeah. I was I like spit it on there. I like smile and I didn't know what to do. So I took a bite of it. <laughs> I, d- mm-hmm. it was really so I, I took a bite of the cum hot dog and I'm like, mmm. Like, <laughs> I kind of want to throw up right now. I'm just thinking about that. Everyone they called cut. Everyone was like, what the. F- 
<laughs> they were Standing all ovation. Laughing. They were like, they were like you it. didn't need to eat it. <laughs> yeah, but you outdid that first come hot dog video. Now, well, now easy. they're gonna take that video and show it to the next girl, yep. and then she's gonna be like, I have to fucking eat she's it afterwards, like, <laughs> and they're gonna be like. Haley did like sorry. She's a legend now. She's a legend. <laughs> Setting porn standards. You gotta kind of beat it. <laughs> wow, that is so, um. Yeah. yeah, I have a lot of fun on set. I love doing stuff like that because it's nice to do something a little bit different, something that makes yeah. me laugh. Like this job isn't very serious, so it's, yeah, it's nice to have something where I don't have to take it seriously. Yeah, no, yeah. you definitely have to like have a sense of humor. Yeah, for sure, definitely. especially about yourself too. Like I think it maybe gets in the way if you think have too much self-importance so just having Mm -hmm. a little laugh like not taking yourself too seriously it really goes a long Mm -hmm. way yeah Yeah. you guys have a showcase is that right yes actually so tell Um, me about your showcase so maybe first i'll tell you about the story that it's based on because oh yeah you kind of glossed over your uh, college adventures yeah this touch oh i don't i don't want to gloss over college adventures (laughs) tell me about your college adventures (laughs) so yeah i shot this performer showcase about a true story that happened to me in my college days. And so the story goes, I was on Tinder back in the college days and I found this account and it had three guys in one account, like three different, like it had their three names, like a picture of all three of them. And I was like, what are they like trying to do here? So I like swiped right and I matched with them. I'm like, is this like what I think it is? Like, are you all trying to fuck a girl at the same time? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they really, thinking back on it, I don't know how serious they were about it, but I was very serious about it. And so I think I was kind of like calling their bluff. I was like, let's <laughs> all fuck. And I don't think they expected to get a girl no. <laughs> like, on board with that. But at the time, I had already been trying to like arrange orgies that like I actually like really tried to set up orgies with my friends in college and Sauce. they kept falling through. Like one of them just ended in a threesome, which was cool, but like, Yeah. So this was like, I was like, this is my chance. And um, I like get them all on board with the idea. And at the time we all had roommates. Like I was sharing a bedroom with my friend and none of us had like a private bedroom. So they were like, I don't know where this could even go down at. And I was like, well, since I'm a science student, I know the science classrooms are open after hours. Like they leave the science building open all night, basically. And I was like, we could, we could fuck in the classroom. And Somehow I convinced these men to do this. So I remember they picked me up at my dorm room. We like drove over to the science campus like and (laughs) it was all three of the guys fucked me in the classroom um, at my college. Wow. (laughs) So it's um, legendary. This happened before I met her, too. Wow. Yeah. So that is ballsy as fuck. I know, dude. Honestly, I don't. I was like 19 or 20 (laughs) at the time. And like I was just full like hormones raging I don't know but (laughs) I really just was like I don't even care if we get caught like whatever and so so that was like (laughs) probably like one of my craziest personal (laughs) stories and I'd been telling the story on my OnlyFans live streams and things and people loved it my fans loved that story and so I thought that would be the perfect thing to make into a movie my editor that I work with closely on my OnlyFans he does He's like a professional director. He Mm -hmm. makes movies for like the Mm Canes Festival and like Mm -hmm. all these big movie festivals. So I used like his expertise and plus my like creativity and we produced together um, a self-produced performer showcase. I just finished shooting it. We shot three days, over three days, and it has four sex scenes. So I added a little bit to the story just to make it a bit longer for the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, so in the movie, I end up sleeping with each one of the guys individually before the group's like gangbang scene happens. Um, and it turned out as like a really special project that I'm super excited about. Um, it's a I'm, good movie. Yeah, I'm going to be starting releases on it in like late July, August, mm-hmm. September. Yeah, the, like full, the full movie is coming out in August. So yeah. So you're gonna be releasing it on your OnlyFans? Yes, I will be releasing. Well, about that, actually, we're gonna be releasing on our OnlyFans, but also we're looking for um, distributors right now to try to like release it, you know, officially. Like, I don't know. Yeah. We tried talking to like Adult Empire. They didn't. They said they're not taking any clients right now. But um, we're gonna talk to like, I don't know. Yeah, we have maybe Adult Time or something. We have some conversations in the works. We want to give them like partial licensing rights mm-hmm. to release it for us because it's a really good movie and I think 
I'm super proud of it. Like Dan Miller at AVN is already very interested in it. So we're trying, and he told us like, we need to find someone to like actually drop it, not just on our OnlyFans. So we're yes. trying to do that. Mm. Um, I might have someone you can talk to. Well, we'll talk That'd about that. That'd be cool. After. Yeah. Not to make this like a super boring business conversation <laughs> yeah. for, for everyone, but a lot of people are going to want like exclusive internet rights or at least like the ability to drop it first, which you don't really want to do because that's yours and you made it for yeah. your fans and you're going to make more money on yeah. your platform my first than anybody thing. else is We're gonna going to give, give you. We're going to practically give it away to them. Like that's yeah. the thing. Like I think that's the exchange. We're going to, we want to practically give it away. To someone yeah. to, to have partial rights at least. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we fucking funded the whole thing ourselves. Yeah. We have like really professional crew. Yeah. There's, st- I mean, it's a dying industry, but there's still yeah. like cable distribution and True. stuff like that. Yeah. And like DVD and, and stuff and like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff, cool. So there's that's still that, so cool. you know, <laughs> which like won't make you as much money as you will like on OnlyFans or whatever, but it still like kind of gets it out there in a way that's. Yeah kind of cool you know to like see your stuff distributed in that way it's mm-hmm. true and i would love to see it like on the cover of a dvd and like mm-hmm. all looking all like finished and beautiful because i mean i really made it just because i thought it would be fun and it would yeah. be a really cool and creative thing to do because a lot of our like videos that we make for my content is just kind of like very lighthearted, mm-hmm. like comedy even sometimes like we just do kind of ridiculous like fun ideas but this was very like based in true life mm-hmm. and I wanted it to feel like real mm-hmm. and so it was a very special project because of that and um yeah it was my first time like fucking that many guys on camera so that was also really cool and who were the performers so Max was my first casting yes and um, <laughs> I also casted Johnny Love and Nick Strokes in it Okay. And um yeah, I think <laughs> those those the two. <laughs> but they had a perfect chemistry for it because they're so the three of them together really felt I really felt like we were back in college like hanging out at the frat house because yeah. they were so like they were making it jokes so and just funny. like talking shit and Well, and that's the thing like I think what a lot of people don't realize that's so important about gangbangs is that the guys have to like each other yeah. yes. more so than so the true. girls liking the guys. I mean, obviously like, you know, you have to yeah. approve of the guys, but the guys have to have a kind of like camaraderie and like ability to work together Yeah, cause um, it's, for that to, if it gets competitive, that can, yeah. Damage, like, and like some guys like just don't like vibe with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you were talking about Kieran earlier and I know that there, there's some performers that are great on their own, but you actually can't put with them with Kieran. Because, like, Kieran, like, intimidates them and, like, they won't, like, be able to perform. Oh, that's interesting. So, you're, second, clearly you're not one of them. No, no. no. <laughs> Our second scene ever was a browser scene. It was a threesome with Kieran, and it just yeah. dropped recently. Yeah. So, like, that, they, I, that's cool. I didn't know that. That's yeah, cool. no, there's, so, there's some guys that don't, like, and so, some guys just don't don't do work well with, with other guys, guys but yeah and true. then there's yeah true, true, true. so it's kind of funny like a lot of times when you see oh, gang bangs fuck. it's a lot of like the same people mm-hmm. like the right, same guys the same. <laughs> yeah, just, so, just so nick strokes girl. and johnny don't really work with other guys mm-hmm. like they're fantastic male performers they don't really have to mm-hmm. um so they don't mm-hmm. and like nick he's your typical straight like frat guy he was like making fun of me and johnny he was like, oh, you guys are so gay because we're going to do, like, a DVP on her. Mm-hmm. We, like, we're talking about that. Johnny doesn't do that either. He just, like, really likes me. And he was like, yeah, fuck it. Let's just do it. Um, and he, like, started making fun of us. Like, oh, you guys are so fucking gay for doing that, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then during the gangbang, we started doing it. And he felt left out. He was like, oh, come on, guys. Let me try it, too. I want to try like, it, too. I want to rub my dick against yours yeah, in her yeah, vagina. Like, come on. It was so funny. <laughs> yeah, it was so, perfect. You guys were so into it during the scene. <laughs> It was really funny. It was a great scene. Uh, we had no cuts the entire gangbang. We went wow. through the whole thing. It was yeah. super smooth. I thought that scene was going to take us like four or five hours to shoot, and it, we got it done in like one and a half. <laughs> so that was really awesome. That's and amazing. Yeah, I'm so excited to start releasing teasers about it and everything. So, oh my god, very so, yeah. exciting. So look me up if you want to. Very keep exciting. Yeah. Stay tuned for all. I want to see it. You won an award at Expos, yes. right? So tell me a little bit about that. Oh my god, yeah. I still sometimes can't believe it. Um, we won the 2024 Clip Artist of the Year, and we won the award together. Mm-hmm. So this is really cool. Um, which is like they usually give it to like one single person, but um, yeah, our work is like since we are a couple, our work is together, and mm-hmm. it was really special for me that the first thing we won was something we were nominated for, like the both of us, because mm-hmm. we've both been nominated individually for AVNs and Xbiz awards and things, but. It was really cool to win it together because I truly do think that 
our work as a couple shines like very bright and um and yeah it was it was an incredible experience i don't know yeah we're worth more together than the sum of our parts like even though we are fucking like she's an amazing performer by herself i think she's we're even better together yeah. Honestly. You just got that magic dick when you come together. She just says, I love you. And and then, and then you know, it's all over. and then it's all over. Yeah. <laughs> we just I, shot a scene together for her all star for um, Team Skeet. And the direct, as soon as he pre- said cut and we finished the scene, he was like, that's one of my best scenes I've shot. Wow. And we get that Ever. pretty, pretty regularly, honestly. <laughs> it's happened a few times. And I was like, oh my God, like really? Because I don't really like ask them how well I did. Sometimes they're just like, you two are really good because I've heard from a lot of directors that most couples don't have an easy time performing together, yeah. like in a professional setting. Yeah, a lot of times um, directors don't actually want to shoot couples together because I don't know. It, like, there's something about like it lo- they, it loses its um, excitement maybe because it's, it's there. And then there's like yeah. sometimes there's like bickering and like you mm-hmm. know. I mean, it's I, like too personal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had a director tell me that before. He was. I, I had a director tell me that he didn't book me for a while because I was dating her. Like, basically, uh, he was like, you know, I've shot other people's boyfriends before, and they all suck. Like, I don't want to fucking shoot people's boyfriends anymore. Yeah. And, oh, I was, and, like, that was one of my biggest things. Like, when we first started in the industry, my biggest goal was to, like, not be just Haley boyfriend. Royce's yeah. boyfriend. Yeah. You know? That is a hard thing to overcome because I can say, like, I've also, you know, if I, like, a hot girl comes in, you know, for, like, a go scene, and then she's like, oh, I only do scenes with my boyfriend. You're always like, <sighs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Great. Like, that sucks. And we don't do that either. Like, she's totally, like, you're yeah. totally welcome to work yeah. with other guys. It's you just, do. I want, I don't want people to roll their eyes when it is us yeah. together. And yes. You know a lot I mean? of the times I'll work with a company with um, another performer, and then they're like, oh, you're really good. Like, we'll have you back with your boyfriend. And I'm like, cool. Like, perfect. Yeah. Um, and then it's flattering when people do get to know us, and they'll consistently book us together. I'm like, this is great. How long yeah. have you guys actually been shooting porn? Uh, less than two a, years. A year and a half? Well, actually. Or, wait. Our porniversary is in November. November 2021 is when we started. 21. Okay, so, oh my so, God, wait. That's not that long. Yeah. Two and a half years? It's not very long, but, I don't know, no. I think, so oh, far. Oh, two and a half years, November 2021? Yeah. Oh God, do we, all, do we all have to do math here? We're all like, <laughs> <laughs> how long is that? No, but I it's really like do love years. it. I don't really see myself doing a different job at least not for another like 10 years or so yeah so what are your long-term goals like do you guys feel like you just want to stay in the adult industry forever is this a transitional thing for you to something else at some point I feel like I'll always have at least one hand in the adult basket like I love performing it's Mm -hmm. so much fun and I I love the community that I found here too like I love Everyone here is like really themselves. Yeah. And it's just nice to not have those like fake walls or barriers or anything. Like I like connecting with people in this industry. And so I don't know. We talk sometimes about having a production company later on or like having some type of production where I'm not performing every day. Cause right now it is a lot of physical energy to be performing how often that we do. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, eventually we'll do something else adult related, but yeah, I mean, I I love performing. Um, a lot of girls are very relieved when they see me on their call sheet because it's always an easy day. I'm yeah, respectful. I'm not going to hurt cool. anyone. Thanks. Um, <laughs> so I love performing, but I think it is like porn is a means to the end to an end, right? Like we're investing a lot. Like we, I want to be able to like take care of my family. I have a very bleak. <laughs> vision for like the economic future so i think like things are getting really tough for a lot of people in the world and they're only going to get tougher i think the same is true for my family and i feel like i have this unique opportunity to help yeah. my family and our family yeah we do invest most of our money because i like i don't want to just come into this industry and like immediately blow all my money on like cars and bags and i don't know whatever yeah. shit people blow their money on yeah um and I think part of that came from entering when we were like what twenty two and not eighteen. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, we've we've thought of this as a way to provide for ourselves in the future and provide for our family. And so yeah, most of our money goes straight into our investments. Yeah, no, that's really smart. And um, I mean, a lot of people aren't necessarily great with money just across the board. It's so hard. I yeah, think if tough, you can dude. if you can take an opportunity to make 
money pretty rapidly. You know, you don't have to work for five years to make 150000 mm-hmm. a year, which honestly in LA is sadly not that much it's money. Not, it's, yeah, exactly. You can't buy a house no, if you yeah. make 150000 a year. almost living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In LA, yeah. It's yeah. bad. Yeah, no, it's so I, I, I think the problem. people that do the well to do the best in this industry, the ones that really see it as like, okay, this is a job and this is like money I need to put aside. Mm-hmm. Like Yeah, like we're doing really well right now and that's not there's no guarantee that we'll be doing well forever. Mm-hmm. So I wanna like take advantage of this opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Um, also I have a problem with spending money. So <laughs> being able like investing is a really good outlet to that because instead of spending my money on like designer clothing or like cars or whatever. I like spend my money on Bitcoin. Like I love collecting or buying Bitcoin. So now it's not in my bank account anymore. I can't fucking spend it on anything else. It's like yeah. stuck in Bitcoin or, you know, invest in Tesla or whatever the fuck you want to do. If yeah. you, want, you don't want to do Bitcoin. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I know my husband, he he invests in a bunch of stuff and he'll be like, oh, look how much this has gone up. And he's always yeah, excited. So he exciting. like talks to me about like the stocks and I'm just like... <sighs> <laughs> I'm like, do whatever you want with the money, babe. Like, you know what you're doing. And I'm like, I so don't care. <laughs> Speaking oh, of investing, tell me yeah. quickly, and then we'll wrap this up about the GameStop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the GameStop video that went viral. Oh, yeah. Do you want to go? Um, Sure. So, do you want to explain also, too, what the GameStop thing is? Because not everybody knows. I guess um, I'll explain yeah. that really quickly. Mm-hmm. Okay, so back early in 2020, 2021, um, there is this guy that noticed um, GameStop was being targeted by a bunch of Wall Street hedge funds. Um, they wanted, they basically were shorting the stock to oblivion to make it go out of business. The same thing happened to a lot of companies like Toys R Us, Blockbuster, yeah. um, Radio Shack. They, these same companies targeted all these other stores and shut them down basically uh, because they decided that their company wasn't viable anymore. Um, so. This guy, deep fucking value, Roaring Kitty, found GameStop and realized that they're heavily shorted. Um, shorted, there was more sh- shares short than they actually existed. So he realized there was a unique opportunity to take advantage of that. And um, that's what a lot of people did. We started buying a lot of GameStop and it became a whole meme on Reddit for a really long time. Yeah, so it was Reddit really that pushed it yeah. up. Yeah, yeah there yeah, was yeah, a yeah. big movement on Reddit of people who didn't like Wall Street and didn't mm-hmm. like the way that they operate and like basically like when they're shorting these companies, they're betting against them yeah. and putting all this money against them till they go out of business. Um, so people, yeah, everyone on Reddit kind of got behind this like movement where it's like, fuck these like white collar, like no face random people. Like, so that was all happening in GameStop. And um, at the time, like Max had a GameStop t-shirt and we just like drove down the road to the, our nearest GameStop <laughs> and he was like, he's like, I want you to flash your boobs like in front of the GameStop. And so we took a little video of me like flashing my titties. You were and so nervous. I was so nervous too. You can see it in the video. She's like, I like run off camera afterward <laughs> because it was like the middle of the day. There was yeah. people around. I remember we had to wait like 15 or 20 minutes because I was like, there's children across the street. Like, yeah. let's wait yeah. till there's let's just no wait. one around. Like I want it. I I don't want to accidentally flash children. That is yeah. never my intention. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we made sure it was clear and I like flashed my boobs and like I was really nervous, but we posted it that night on Reddit and it went crazy. It went crazy. It was on the front page. It was like maybe like the number four top trending post. That's crazy. For like a couple hours. Yeah. Um, on the whole website. So that was just insane. And I got a huge boost from that. Um, and I got a ton of fans from Reddit during those days. And that's really where my fan base started. So that Mm -hmm. was like a really cool, like, it was cool to be recognized. And also like be a part of this movement of like the, the people are really coming up against like these greedy, you know, Mm -hmm. white collar, like hedge fund financial guys, Yeah, you know, that are just like looking to like destroy, Uh you know, other people's livelihoods so that they can like make more money, even when they lose, they still win. Like we fucking won when it went super high, went to $500 and they, sh- you know, shut off the buy button. Yeah. It was like yeah. a big it Well, a and big it deal. just proves the point that those people are manipulating the market and yes. the whole entire financial ecosystem to their favor. So it's, yeah. it's like, that's the point where people were trying to prove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We've never sold. We still have GameStop <laughs> yeah. for what heard, it's worth. I heard it like went back up again, right? It's, yeah. It's having yeah. a little moment We're right up. Now. Like our investment is still up. We're still like in the green. Um, And 
yeah, it's it's never ended. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. It's, you know, we'll see what happens. It's a cool, like, underdog story. It's a very cool underdog story. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. I have a couple of Patreon questions oh, that oh, yeah. um, I'll ask in a separate segment oh, uh, that we do as a bonus Q&A for my Patreon members. Yay. So, mm-hmm. but in the meantime, can you tell everybody where they can find you on social media? Haley, you want to start? Sure. So if you guys want to see more, go ahead and go to HaleyRose.com and you can find all my socials there. Um, and if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at HaleyRoseFucks. So yeah, HaleyRose.com. Check it out. Yeah. Hi guys. I'm Max. <laughs> um you can find my links on maxphils.com. My Twitter is Maxphils Your Mom. <laughs> 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 I love MILF. <laughs> Tell your mom I said hi. <laughs> um and yeah, yeah, find my stuff. We just had a new video for a See Him Fuck release. Mm. So that was a really interesting. Boy, oh, girl, no. that we did. You can also feel free to look us up on Pornhub. Oh, yeah. We have some really cool free videos out on Pornhub. So search Haley Rose on the PH. Yeah, you'll see some of our like legendary videos on our Pornhub. Amazing. <laughs> and you guys can find me on Instagram and on Twitter um, at Holly Randall. And of course, if you want to support this podcast and access interviews like this live streamed or bonus content like we're about to do, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. 